What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Brood War Ladder Battle. We're taking a look at Xiao Shuai and a few games he played on the ladder. He's spawning here in the top left. His opponent for this first game is Stork. So what I've got for you today, one game versus Stork, one game versus Bishop, and then one game with Soul Key playing off race as Terran. So that's what we're going to be getting into Kind of excited to see what he does against Stork here and how Stork is looking. I was so excited for Stork this season after he put up some amazing days in the KCM. I thought for sure we were going to see him dominate. But uh, turns out Zerg is still a bit of a problem for him. It's, it's still a little bit rough. He made it through uh, into the ASL on the back of his PVT. Uh, which was looking fantastic. He was looking like a very modern player and that he was taking it really, really seriously. But that really, it didn't seem to translate into his PVZ and got shut out pretty quickly. Bit unfortunate. I hope he continues to develop and continues to train hard. We need, we want and need a good, strong Protoss player uh, in the modern age to kind of lead the charge for the Protoss race. They've been struggling lately. They've been having a hard time. I don't know if Stork is the guy to do it, but we'll continue to watch him and see how he develops. Now, Shao is going to send his first two links sort of across the map. He's just making his way there eventually. Only made two Lings though, and the cannon started just after Lings popped out. Maybe we could see a run by. And that's why we're seeing the probes pulled. Probes are gonna get into this wall and buy just that extra like three to five seconds that he needs to uh, not allow any Lings to slip in. And there we go, he does kill off one Ling. Probe is still at large on the map. He could try for some sort of uh, cannon play. I've seen people put cannons down in the corner there before. It can be highly frustrating, especially when you're, you know, going only, only for the one ling or the one set of lings, excuse me, and then trying to defend uh, with the bare minimum. Uh, if you're not being really careful and conscious with that ling, ch running around and checking for the probe, putting down pylons. You could end up losing your third base really, really quickly. So, Xiao Shui, just going to chase the probe for now. Stork, no cannons on the way. If he had snuck out a second probe, he could have been throwing cannons down right there. So, it's a bit of a risk what Xiao Shui is doing, not producing any extra links. But he's got link speed on the way. He's got layer on the way. Back at home, Stork, completely stable. Everything is even at this point, I would say. because he did manage to get away with that Nexus right off the bat. He didn't, uh, wasn't forced to build a second cannon or anything like that. And Xiao Shui only built a single pair of links, focusing majority on drones this game so far. First Zealot heading its way across the map and right as that second Overlord pops, or that, that newest Overlord pops, we're gonna see some additional links get produced. He already has a small group. Four lings are ready to intercept this zealot. As soon as he sees those lings at the natural, the zealot needs to turn around and head back home. Nice catch there. Picking off that probe immediately. Plus one attack for both air and ground weapons has been started for Stork. Stork gonna loop around and actually dodge these lings, but Shao's probably too quick for that. I don't think he saw the zealot, but he knew that there was a possibility it could be heading southward. Nice little spot here, but it's not going to allow him to mitigate too much damage as three lings are able to hit there. Just the one ling gets picked off, and this is a pretty sweet cleanup so far for Xiao Shuai. He hasn't taken any damage. He's built the absolute bare minimum. Only four lings remain. Total that were made, six only in this entire game. He's sending his overlord back home. So he hasn't even lost an overlord yet. Everything looking very nice for Xiao Shuai. He probably want to get a Ling out in front of the Protoss base just to see when the Zealots start to come out. But 
Other than that, I don't see any difficulties here for Xiao Shuai. He should have those Scourge out in time to save this Overlord. And as long as he's got a, another pair of Scourge somewhere... Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any trouble for him. Does he actually lose the Overlord? Okay, he will lose one Overlord, but that is it. Scourge pop out immediately after. And so Xiao Shuai will continue to drone... Just keeping an eye on the front. Back at home. Stork gets his Templar Archives on the way. He's got a cannon. Set up in the main. Just in case there was some sort of Ogre Zerg play coming. Four Mutas so far have been made. I don't think we're going to see too much more than five though. Third Extractor comes up. And there's the armor. So maybe there's a potential. Maybe there's a possibility of Ogre Zerg in this game. Still... I think we're going to see the five uh, Muta defense into a Hydra Den. We should be having an Evo Chamber popping up in just a moment over at this third base as well. Being pushed back a little bit. Looks like uh, some of those Lings might have got picked off. No, they're back at home, actually. Four Lings here. Single Sunken at either base. Looking quite strong. Still no SimCity uh, for this area. He might be missing out on an Evo Chamber. Sometimes this happens to me. Sometimes I forget the Evo Chamber when I'm busy putting everything else together. And yeah, he just throws it down now. But it feels a bit late. Does feel a tad bit late if he was really committed to making Hydras. Maybe not the case. Maybe he wants to just go into a lot more Mutas. He's already making more Scourge. And he's had that third gas mining for quite some time. So what does Stork have back at home? One Archon. We've got six Corsairs. That plus one is done. Armor's not quite complete yet uh, on these uh, for these air forces of the Zerg. So he's going to have to take this fight very carefully. The Archon's going to add a lot to the DPS on the air. Uh, going to kill off a few of these uh, Scourge immediately. The Mutas can come back and deal with the Zealots, no problem. Great blocking there. The eggs creating a solid wall that the zealots just can't really get by. One zealot makes his way into the main. Gets a single kill. We'll probably get a second. I have to imagine. But won't get more than that. And the zealot archon is chased back. So, where are the scourge? There they are. Weren't able to connect on all of these corsairs. The corsair number is getting pretty scary at this point. Ten more drones in production. He's going to go up to... About 50 drones. And then we'll have to switch into Hydras. This Hydra switch can't come soon enough. He's forgotten the upgrade. That could be a big factor going forward. Sometimes I've actually noticed this a lot. Remember we watched... Uh, maybe you weren't here, but... Uh, if you follow the channel very closely, we watched a series between... Uh, Flash and Xiao Shuai, where I distinctly remember him missing some serious important upgrades... And so that may be uh, a common theme for this man. Going to be flying into the main main Ogre Zerg play is in full effect. However, that's not enough Mutas to kill three cannons and still have something left over to fight. Uh, for example, some Dragoons popping out and stuff. Great connections here on all of these Corsairs. My god, the Corsair number just gets obliterated. What was he doing, Stork? Like not paying attention or just hold positioning? I don't know what he was thinking there. He let those Scourge get the ultimate hits, crushing that Corsair army. Now a lot of Hydras are popping out, but he could just remain on a bunch of Mutas. Build a bunch more uh, Mutas and Scourge and just go for the main. He could totally do that now that all the uh, Corsairs have been eliminated. So far, he's getting into Lurker. He has his Queen's Nest on the way. A fourth base is down in the bottom left-hand corner. This is enough Hydras to push this back. But it might not be a good idea to engage fully. All right. No, with the extra Hydras coming up from the south and the Mutas helping out in the air, that's definitely going to be a reasonable fight for Shao Shuai. The third base is up for Stork. But I don't know if you can recover this situation, guys. He lost so much. Another huge wave of drones comes out. The one saving grace for Stork right now is he's two upgrades ahead. 
He's got double upgrades. He's going to have triple three upgrades ahead of the Zerg player soon. And that's a lot of advantage. That's difficult to mitigate in this matchup. Zealots just will not die. <laughs> they just won't die with two armor and you don't have any attack upgrades. Man, it gets pretty silly. We do have double upgrades coming now for Xiao Shuai. He might even want to throw down the third evolution chamber. Just get that one rolling as soon as possible because yeah, you don't want to wait too long. There it is. A third evolution chamber is on the way. I want to get that melee upgrade rolling as soon as possible. Sunken colonies being laid down here at the bottom left. 63 drones total is insane. That is so many drones. He is going to be able to pump out in an, just a crazy amount of units. He actually needs two more hatcheries over here. Yeah, two, three more hatcheries would be fine. Um, You never want to have more than a thousand minerals in the bank. Just throw down an extra hatch. I like to see one more hatchery here potentially two more if you're being generous because we're gonna bank up a lot of cash with 65 drones it's gonna come in very very quickly now there's a lot of upgrades being made right now that's kind of e eating up some of these resources he does start another hatchery i like to see it i very much like to see that okay he's gonna put it over here his macro center over on this high ground it gets that hatchery underway and yeah he's using up a lot of money for upgrades at the moment but as all these buildings and upgrades start to finish he is going to have a glut of resources that he really does need to spend quickly and so having extra hatcheries is the best way to do that to deal with that glut of resources he's taking six o'clock at the same time and has a mutilus flock flying around looks like he's reinforced this and is looking to potentially snipe some Templar. This army only has three Templar. One Archon is not going to be good enough to stop the Mutas from picking off these storms. Be very careful with this army, Stork. You do not have a big Corsair fleet to be able to deal with these Mutas. Here he comes, heading up towards this macro location. He's going to force Xiao Shuai into kind of a rough engagement with... Not too much room to maneuver, but he immediately takes out a couple of the Templar. Wait, he's he's targeting wrong. He hasn't killed any of the Templars so far. One goes down. Okay, another one did fall, I think, to the Lurker Spines, but this is not very good control with the Mutas. A little bit of over control, I would say, with the Mutas in that last fight. It would have been maybe better just to let everything fight on its own or just right click and shift click down each of the Templar with the Mutas. Instead, so much ends up dying. He isn't able to really flank with much either. I think there was a misclick with the army that was sent around this direction. It seemed to have come back around and not allowed Xiao Shuai to surround and finish off this army. Now, he does manage to push everything back, but meanwhile, Stork's taken top right. Uh, he's growing still. He's uh, pumping out a huge amount of army. And there's no lurkers over here, by the way. We're just fighting Hydras versus Zealots under Dark Swarm. Where are all the lurkers? We need Plague as well. Plague is not quite done. Dark Swarm could be thrown down, but the Defiler dies before that can happen. Some links with Crack coming up to the front. They've got the 1-1, one, one, but this is becoming a really uneven fight with the amount of upgrades that... Stork has in the lead. Hydras are trying to fight here. Unburrowed Lurker just kind of chilling. By the way, this base down in bottom center is going to fall here pretty soon. Those links can't handle the Zealots at that location. And even more Zealots are going to be sent to just clean that up. Still skirmishing with these Dragoons. You never want to overextend with this army. But as long as you can hold down some of the forces of Xiao Shai this area... And keep poking him with Zealots at other locations. You're going to be doing okay. God damn, the Zealot count. Pretty high. However, the Zealots are getting very low. If he just brings another 24 lings over this area, he could probably clean it. But he's not going to be able to clear it in time to save the base. And that was really the goal of all of this for Stork. Was just to prevent that further expansion from Xiao Shuai. Xiao Shuai is just... 
sending in small group after small group of lings into that area with all of the uh, zealots is not going well for him he sieges up a lot of lurkers in a very tight formation and gets stormed but does manage to land a pretty reasonable plague on this army it's quite close so far De Dar defiler making its way down through this six o'clock does not have energy forgot to consume on that before sending it out and that could potentially go down a pretty big loss of resources uh, represented by that uh, defiler getting picked off finally these zealots are going to be finished and you can think about retaking that base however stork is still going to put on pressure over towards this macro center Will Shao Shui be able to pull together the resources, the army, to stop this from uh, getting completely surrounded? As soon as he gets on top of these hatcheries, they're going to do little to nothing. Uh, the ar army that's popping out is going to do little to nothing to stop this. He needs Hydras in this army as well. He can't just fight this with pure Ling against this many Archons. It's going to be a massacre. These Archons getting a lot of kills so far. He comes forward with the Defiler, finally drops a Darkstorm, but it's way too late. The Dragoons look like they're going to be killed eventually by these Lings. Meanwhile, oh, top left. Darkstorm and Lurker Ling actually gets on top of that and kills it. I did see the uh, army heading around that top side, but I was more concerned with the hatcheries here getting taken down and this base getting uh destroyed for Shao Shui. however the move into the top right is absolutely huge he killed off one of the two remaining mining bases for stork and he's only now going to get this one online going back up to two bases it's a bit of a precarious situation for stork as he looks to deny this base down at 6 o'clock. Shao Shui can try to counterattack over into this top right. But it's likely that we'll just see everything come to a head at this base. If Shao Shui doesn't want to try and expand northward. Here comes a drone though. Drone going to come up and start to expand in this direction. Archons moving their way forward. Clearing out the few remaining lurkers and lings over at this location the defiler gonna get surrounded and killed meanwhile lings and defiler making their way up to the front trying to put down some cost effective plagues on this army only managing to hit some of these zealots not all and will get cleaned up eventually i see some lings coming through this side as well dark swarm on that mineral line so they can't really be stormed at this point great plague on all of that Really bringing these Photon Cannons into kill range. The Archons are still going to hold strong, but... The Lings are starting to trade better and better. Let's take a look at the upgrades overall at this point. No plus two attack just yet, but plus three armor and plus two attack is about to finish. And at that point, Shao Shui's army will start to trade very, very well. A lot of lurkers down here in the bottom left-hand corner. I'm not sure what that's all about. He needs to push forward. Try to take control over this area. Maybe push in from this side as well. At the same time, he is going to move those lurkers forward now. A lot of lurkers underneath this army. They're dealing so much damage to the Archons in this stack. Can he actually kill a few of those? A lot of lurkers go down and not too many kills on these Archons. Unfortunately, DT going to slip through. Are any bases vulnerable? to the dt attack i don't think so we've got the sunken colony with an overlord here that should be fine to just deal with this he'll get a couple of kills potentially but not much you know the dark templar decides to just make a run for it zealots over in the top right hand corner are defending but no base has been set up for stork just yet he's gonna push up this ramp zealots just completely annihilated the lings my god so many kills on those lings trying to fit through that tight little space with archons laying down their splash and the storms just annihilating everything leaving me a little bit speechless my goodness they're trading so well lings and lurkers gonna come up from all different sides the lurkers really do need to burrow at this point though 
Lings can help to buffer, but you gotta get underground and start to deal that damage. All the lurkers get picked off. At the same time, looks like a DT was over here doing a little bit of damage or something. This army will pull back away from that macro center. Maybe look to assault this base in the bottom center right before Joshua fully gets that online. He could also go for this area, but he's starting to get trapped. He needs to make a move now. Either try to run out this direction, attack into one of these locations, or just get completely surrounded and killed. Those are his, really his only choices. He's gonna attack into the center, hitting it from both sides at the same time. It's a great move versus Lurkers, which will concentrate their fire in different directions, not putting out the greatest amount of damage that they can. A lot of links are coming up in the reinforcement train, though. These Archons are gonna have to bail, make a run for it. However, turning with their brothers, the Zealots, Tanking a lot of that damage. The Archons dealing so much. Picking off a lot of this. Are going to back off eventually. The Hydras. The natural predator for the Archon. Finally brought to the fore. Trying to pick off the last few of these four Archons. That's what it's coming down to right now. These four Archons are doing so much work. Lings and Hydras are going to hit this base from behind. But there's a Reaver here who is ready to fight. The bottom center is going to get taken down. I cannot believe he's going to kill this base. That was such a well-fortified position, and Stork hitting it from both sides manages to finish it off. More Lurkers are going to come forward, but I'm afraid that this is just throwing some more sticks on the fire. Stork will finally retreat. Base in the top right for Stork. How's he doing on mineral income? Not the greatest. Running low over in this center right. So that base going down, once that base is finished, Stork will have very little income until he gets this uh, top right base reestablished. He's a little bit ahead in supply, but it's not much. It's indicative of a pretty decent Zerg position. And now that we've got uh, three, two on the Lings, they're gonna be charging through a lot of this army. Great kills on this army. Reaver, but eventually I think it gets picked off. Well, not if those links stack up quite like that. Nope. Will manage to survive. I'd love to see how many kills on that. Because it is a lot. A lot of kills on that Reaver. Won't be able to sustain too much more damage though. And there are more links coming. Again, attacking through this area. Stork has been so adamant about attack attacking through this spot exactly. And it might actually work this time because there's nothing over here for Shao Shui. He's... A Focused all of his attention down towards this bottom part of the map. He's finally cleared out that all-important Reaver. Army going to be moving forward, uh, northward, excuse me. Instead of going into the main, he's going to try and clear this uh, one of the few remaining mining, remaining mining bases for Shao Shui. Shao Shui trying to push in here. He's eating a lot of damage to these storms, man. The storm's absolutely annihilating his stuff. One of his final last... Rem Mining bases is gone. Oh my gosh, Shao Shui doesn't have anything to mine from. He's got no mining. He's only mining off of this base, and he has to get 6 o'clock online. This is crazy. I think Stork may be going to win this game, guys. He's got another base in the top left. He's done such a good job of just keeping his Archons alive through all of this. Now his Archon count is so high. Look at how many kills on these things. This guy's got 24 kills. 24 kill Archon. Absolutely insane. Shao Shui pushing up towards the natural. Now he's going to get a big plague on all of this. That is for sure. Great Dark Storm there as well. He should be able to wipe out this army if Stork doesn't retreat, but he loses his macro center. All of those uh, precious hatcheries are going to go down. He needs to transfer drones. Get them to mining. He needs money so so badly look at all these drones not mining they could be long distance mining from somewhere get any sort of resources into them uh, that he can he's just sending in waves and waves of army towards this natural but he doesn't realize he is about to be broken over at this base he's got to kill this observer one observer goes down there's one more if he gets the observer he might be able to hold for another minute oh it's being targeted Oh, no, it doesn't go down. 
The lurkers are gonna get killed here. The Archon's pushing through. I can't believe that. Observer didn't end up getting picked up. That is insane to me. He loses his base at six. And Shao Shui will be taken down. Stork. This guy, the Archon King, man. He has been keeping these alive for so long. Look at that. 33 kills on this thing now. These Archons, absolute heroes. And there's really nothing left for Shao Shui at this point. He's sending an army around, but... DTs are coming out. They're going to be sniping down things like these Defilers. The last few units that Shao Shui has put together being killed by some invisible units. So frustrating at this point in the game. Only 50 drone or 50 supply, 34 of which is drones. He's got very little to his name, Shao Shui. We're just waiting for that tap out any minute now. He's going to be uh, exiting this game. Oh, Stork. This was so close. From the moment he lost all of those Corsairs, I thought he was likely going to lose this one, but he's managed to just grit his teeth, bite down, and just hold with the Archons for so long. Plus, pushing through this area was clutch. Every time he was pushing through here, he was forcing Shao Shui into a difficult, really a miserable position. Stork is just consolidating all of his armies, consolidating his units, and GG is finally called. Shao Shui taps out. A very impressive game from Stork, the Archon King. Wow, what a great way to start off this series. I don't know about you guys, but that had me on the edge of my seat. Stork making some pretty big errors with his Corsairs, but Shao Shui not quite able to finish him off. Not quite able to kill that Archon army that just kept on backing up, regenerating shields. I tell you what, if he had surrounded that first push from Stork, uh, if his army units had moved properly and gotten around the back of that force, I think he would have crushed that game. Absolutely crushed it, but that's the problem with Minstrel. It's a very difficult map to move your army on, and a lot of Zerg players struggle in Zerg versus Protoss. Now we're here with Bishop in the top left-hand corner. Once again on Minstrel. Shao Shui in the bottom right. I've been loving this map for the games that it's given us. It's given us so many excellent, excellent back and forths. There's a lot of options for players who are, even if they're behind, they can still find ways to eke out a base or a counterattack down one of these pathways and try to make it a game. It's not my favorite when it's simple for the uh, opposing player to just camp outside of a natural. Like, if they can just hold one choke and there's nothing you can do about it, you have to do drops or something like that. That's a bit that's a bit of a frustrating situation. It can lead to some kind of stale games. In a match like this, where you've got so many lanes, there's so many options. You can move around, you can dodge and duck and weave and try to get something done. And Shashwai had a little bit of a hard time against the head movement of Stork, just kind of getting out of the way. You know, putting in a few jabs and then backing up. Not allowing himself to get cornered. His back against the, the corner. Staying active. Now, this is uh, a one Rex fast expand from Bishop. Is he going to be able to get this Overlord? No. Shao Shui sees that. He does not want to allow that first Overlord to get picked off. So he's going to move to the cliff. It's not the optimal location for your Overlord, of course. You'd much rather have it over here, but... Uh, better safe than sorry. Better alive than, you know, dead at this point in the game. At least it pr pr uh, produces some amount of vision. Allows you to see something. And, it, you know, of course, it is a supply provider as well. Losing that first Overlord may be one of the most painful things in StarCraft 1. Uh, you just know that you are eons behind 
as soon as you lose that thing it is so frustrating your opener is completely ruined all of your timings are off it's just the way it is you got to be careful with that thing it's so valuable as a scout but it's also so painful when you lose it dropping a drone down to block the natural the entrance to the uh, main base Shao Shuai going to keep a, a little bit of his cards tucked into his chest he's not gonna reveal everything he's not gonna reveal the whole hand here just yet and so with just four links he manages to force back six marines just due to the fact that Bishop doesn't quite know how many lings have been made at this point. He's just kind of hesitant to move out with these Marines because he doesn't have that full scout, even though he totally could. He absolutely could have pushed across the map and done some damage, at least forced out some more lings. He sees the four and he's just not willing to go across the map. And Shao Shui is taking great advantage of this. He's taking his third base now. And he didn't build any additional links. He did not blink when he saw those Marines coming across the map. And that's a gamble. That is 100% a gamble. You, If you see those Marines coming and they don't stop and you don't make links, you just make drones, you are dead. There's no two ways about it. And so taking that gamble is going to pay off for Shao Shui this game, but it's not the case every game. Sometimes this gamble will just cause you to die some mutas are now in production we're gonna build a sunken colony he's actually thinking about building a sunken colony a moment ago but thought better of it a little surprising moment there decides to restart that sunken now canceling it realizing that the marines are going around the long way probably to punish this third base mutas are going to be made to deal with that SCV in the main base gets it picked off. How many mutas do we have in total here just now? Five only. It might be a little bit tough to keep this base alive. Stim goes up. Misses the shots with those mutas. Not able to get the first kill. Second marine goes down. Five mutas can one shot. Now that it's four, it's not as easy. Another Stim. Another muta goes down. He's back up to five once again, but he's losing mutas. And he's not really trading it for anything valuable. He's just killing off these Marines and keeping this base alive. I think about three mutas or four mutas went down during that. So not a lot of mutas left over. That's a bit rough for Shao Shui. Losing all of those mutas just to clear out, what, eight Marines? Yeah, it doesn't feel very good. A Firebat moving around the top side, but that'll be spotted by this Zergling. Very nice scout there. Shao Shui, does he see it though? Does he see it, though? I don't think so. I don't think he saw it. That could be really unfortunate if that makes its way all the way around. And he didn't notice. Oh, boy. Does that hurt. One Firebat can come in and just kill a ton of drones at this third base. And he is just sitting here making all drones. Yeah. This could be really bad. It's so unfortunate because Xiao Shui had the Ling on the way like he, he sent that link specifically to scout for anything moving around that top side and now he's gonna lose a bunch of drones one has already gone down another is about to fall these mutas are looking for damage but this fire bat absolutely crushing it pushing everything away denying so much gas so much gas was just denied there and so Shao Shui, a little bit, little bit hobbled, a little bit limping right now. Lost more mutas than he uh, should have uh, for the defense of this third base. Lost a drone. Got denied from mining for a little bit. Now going to throw down his tech to swap out of mutalist play. In the meanwhile, going into what appears to be Valkyrie. This could be good for Shao Shui. Since Bishop is planning to build a few Valkyries, at least this could be a moment where Shao Shui's tech uh, swap could be strong, right? He's going to get into a hive here in a moment. He's probably going to go into Hydra's Defiler. And Valkyries are just not what you want. 
in any circumstance, Hydralis Defiler will destroy that. Let's see what he saw. He scanned the natural. He sees Hydras popping out. That's probably going to tip the hat. Uh, but he may have like a little opportunity to move out with this. Right as these Valkyries finish. Maybe he can try to come across the map and attack. But man, this Lurker aspect is just about done. As soon as that's finished, he's going to have Lurkers on the way. And that's going to close the window of opportunity that Bishop would have otherwise had to break in and actually deal some damage. That's why picking away at these Marines a little bit more before they start to come across the map. It's very important that he does so. He has a an evolution chamber on the way now. First two Valkyries are out. This is a scary moment. This is when things can really flip on their head. Where are the lurkers? Wow, that's so many lurkers. So many lurkers are being made. Uh, as long as he gets into position and stops the Marines at this bridge, he should be fine. Because the Marines will have to rotate a long way around to attack center left. Or center right, excuse me. And so the lurkers will have time to rotate from here to here. And just try to block that. Four Marines are going to make their way around that side. Three Lurkers over by the bridge. Four Lurkers now in total. A few more Lurkers going to move around this top side. And basically he's held. He's held for now. Defiler Mound on the way. Are we going to go for some drops? No, it's going to be a mech switch. Bishop. What a guy. Going to switch straight up into mech. Now wait. Is he going to walk into that? Oh my gosh. It is a shame that he didn't put those on a hold position. Shao Shui could, uh, could have just annihilated that army and given himself a big lead. As it stands, he killed off quite a few Marines. And so I would still say he's doing quite well. He's got a lot of mutas uh, around just kind of chilling. In the meanwhile, a couple of drops are going to be made. And he's going to look to maybe hit this main base. However, Shao Shui, as long as he keeps the Mutas and Scourge active, he should have no trouble beating this. Lurkers on high ground with one sunken colony. Lurkers at this bridge. Not easy to break either. Valkyries are going to move around, start to clear some overlords. So maybe make a bit of a, a hole in the vision potentially. To where these drops can maybe make it in. But. I don't know. I think that. With the number of mutas and scourge we're seeing. He should be able to stop this. He sees the drops coming in now. This is the moment. He's got to go after these drops. Here we go. Oh boy. That's a lot of scourge. The scan preemptive. Is going to save these dropships for the most part. He's going to target. Some of the Scourge under the drop, but he only manages to land one hit. Both of the dropships are still alive. More Scourge are coming forward. He kills all of the Valkyries, and that's got to be it. There's Lings and Lurkers in this main base, which are ready to intercept, plus all the Mutas that could easily one-shot this dropship that's already low on HP. This drop is over. There's not going to be any gains made by sending in drops to Shao Shui's main any longer. Now he could potentially come down from the north and dive on this as well. But for the time being, he's just brought a ton of resources into the main to, to deny anything. And Bishop is going to double expand. And so we'll see if Shao Shui is able to get as aggressive as some of the other uh, pro Zerg players that we have. Uh, in order to actually put the pressure back onto the Terran player while they're switching into mech. It's very difficult to do. It's not an easy task. You have to send out Lings to clear mines. You have to be very vigilant against Vulture runbys. And we gotta get Overlord speed as well. Gotta start clearing out mines a little bit more efficiently. More drones being added. This is really getting into that drone count now, going up to, what are we at, 37 now. He's going to go probably to 45 on three base and just 
hammer out the biggest Hydra army you've seen. Masses of Hydras, tons and tons of Defilers, and a few Lurkers smattered in here and there. On the other side, we've got a bunch more factories coming out for Bishop. Bishop is lighting up this drone line, though. Oh my gosh, so many kills in this drone line. It's very, very painful at this point. This is what I was talking about. It's just stopping the vultures from getting kills is difficult in this position, but it is critical that you can make it happen. Whoa, 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 nine mutas being made. Holy, he's gonna scan and see that. Time to switch into some, uh, I don't think Valkyries are really the, the answer, especially when we've got one, one, and another armor upgrade coming up. Oh my gosh. These are gonna be some very heavily upgraded mutas we're, we're seeing now. So I don't know if just going into Valkyries is gonna be enough. It's probably the case that we'll need to see a bunch of Irradiate and then a ton of Goliaths added on to deal with this because these mutas are gonna come out and start to just wreck the tanks if he's not careful. Wow, a lot of these mutas go down. That was not the best executed mutalisk attack I've ever seen. That was pretty sloppy, honestly. And so a lot of those mutas end up falling. Is that going to make or break Shao Shui in this game? I'm not sure. I would really love to see him attack this base right now because this these turrets are not yet done. This is amazing. Go after the turrets now. Get some of those kills and start to deny some of the mining here from Bishop. If he just gets this online for free, that's gonna represent a massive issue for Xiao Shui going later on. Okay, a couple of great irradiates here. Xiao Shui not paying attention to that. Oh my gosh! What the hell just happened there? So much death and destruction from those irradiates and what was this, three Valkyries? Man, even with one armor, you're not gonna be able to survive that kind of an attack. One Ling over here, getting some kills in. It's like he might even get another one. Three kills total, doing some good work. But Bishop has re-established this base. He's now got Goliaths on the way. And what is happening for Xiao Shuai? Just kind of sitting here, trying to get a fourth base out, trying to get some upgrades going, but losing more drones, two vulture runbys, and overall just kind of running into mines. Oh my god. Ah. Uh, oh, it's so painful. It's so painfully hard to play this style of game. The mech switch is so strong and difficult to play against. Nine drones in production. He's gonna try and get this fourth base online, but he's been behind for so long. 11 kills on this. Are you shitting me right now? 11 kill vultures. 75, by the way, guys. Good, just crazy amounts of damage from that. Even with Lurkers set up in the front, you can't stop it because the Lurker Spines are too slow. The Vultures just run straight past. Actually crazy that that did so much damage. 11 kills is nuts. Bishop is winning in this game right now. He's 60 supply ahead. He's got plus two already with plus three on the way. When this push comes, it is going to be so scary. Xiao Shui really struggling to put everything together. He's got plus two armor, plus three armor is on the way. Mind you, that is so much armor for these mutas, but they just cannot stand against the wealth of anti-air brought forward by Bishop now with the science vessels in the mix. Look, that one's got six kills. Disgusting. Four kills there. Ten Mutalists were killed by just those two Irradiates alone. Valkyries are moving forward. Some Scourge are going to intercept those, picking them off quite easily. 
but unfortunately not going to be able to get the vessels just yet and so the mutas are not going to be able to do much mutas are going to have a very hard time engaging this force and bishop is just going to set up on the other side he will kill this he will kill this base and there's really not much that Shao Shui can do about it. He's going to try and get up here. Try to deny 12, at least for now. Some Lings are being brought forward. Some Mutas are going to be sent in. Cue the irradi uh, Irradiate, though. More Marines are sent up. I'm not sure where those came from. Maybe from another defensive position, because I don't think he's building any. I think, in fact, all of the barracks are floating. And so he's going to move into position to actually kill these lurkers. However, a bit of a mistake there. Doesn't have a radiate for these lurkers. And so the Dark Swarm is going to keep him safe for now. Still having a very hard time. 145 supply has been put together. And we're about to see a big commitment to the fight in just another moment. Some Scourge better be made, though, to deal with this. Vessel, which is going to deal so much damage. He's really got to be on top of the split here. Coming in with the Lings and Mutas. Trying to get on top of all this. There's the Irradiate on one of the bottom Mutas. He will pull that out pretty successfully. Mutas going to push a lot of this back. And even kill some of the tanks. But, man, it is still looking so scary. Another base going to be thrown down. But, here comes some tanks and goliaths to clear that out base in the bottom left hand corner is going to be taken as well maybe these meters need to get aggressive start to kill this base down in the bottom left force a response out of bishop but so far shao Shui not really moving those forces just yet dark swarm does manage to come down but an irradiate immediately on that lurker is going to put a damper on things coming forward with the lurkers getting underneath this dark swarm is pretty good but the bases are getting so numerous at this point bishop has so much of the map i can't imagine shao shui finding a way to win this i mean he's building into a pretty large muta force once again he's starting to get into ultras as well but how can you stand against what 60 workers four bases and max upgrades these this equation does not equal a zerg win and so we're just gonna see xiao shui struggle a bit longer try to make some moves and bishop close the noose around his neck slowly choke him out of this game the links are gonna die there uh, this base will have to be lifted and run away the counterattack is reasonable for Shao Shui, but it's not gonna make too much of a difference as forces are already pushing into his third base doesn't really have much to try and defend this area and mutas are gonna come out try to fight some turrets try to kill some of these goliaths but Irra irradiates we have enough irradiates for pretty much all of these mutas and Shao Shui is too busy doing other things on the map he's not even paying attention to this he did finally manage to get these ultras out onto the field but with the number of tanks that are available already I think that Shao Shui can kiss his hopes of winning this game goodbye Yeah, Bishop is completely crushing in this game with the mech play. It doesn't get used very much anymore, but you can see its power. The mech switch is super strong. And Xiao Shui having a very difficult time contending with it, which I don't blame him for at all. It's so tough to take good fights against mech armies. And Bishop just pulls him apart, dude. He's got way too much. Even though there's 2,000 minerals in the bank, Chao Shui's got next to nothing. Dropping below 100 supply. I'm going to speed this game up a little bit. As this game has reached its twilight. 
all of this mech coming across the map finally bishop ready to, to just bring down the hammer on the army of Shao Shui. Shao Shui gonna throw down a last dish effort putting out a dark swarm there with a lurker sending out some lurk uh, some ultras in this direction but everything getting wiped out that's coming out of his natural and gg is finally called he taps out and bishop takes this one home okay one more game for the boys we've got soul key spawning here in the top center terran player versus shao shui in the bottom center dominator is our map and i hope we don't see another kind of bash like that i thought bishop played well but man he really took his time ending that one <laughs> he was not interested in pushing for a very long time he's like all right i'm just gonna well he you know he's doing what you're supposed to do right on paper it's what makes the most sense as a terran player is you know get some vultures in there do a little bit of harassment lay down mines everywhere and when the zerg decides to take another base just stretch out far enough to kill that base and that's that's it you're good just prevent expansions get your own expansions keep growing and just prevent your opponent's expansions that is the technically right way to do it but uh it does lead to a kind of a boring game when you're already that far ahead at the end was interesting the way that xiao shui held on against the early game aggression I liked his play and the way that he defended the drops and all that. That was great. But when it came to a mid-game tech switch, the mech switch, didn't seem like Xiao Shuai had it in him to fight that back, unfortunately. That may be his, his kryptonite. It seemed like he was really struggling to clear mines and, you know, move through those uh, difficult positions. Now, in this game... Xiao Shui has opted to open with a overpool. No, nine pool with a extractor trick. Nine pool extractor trick into a 10th drone. Then make an overlord and then go for six lings. So these first six lings are going to be scary. No question about it. But with a wall back home, and soul key able to lift off his barracks and just land it i think he's gonna be fine i think he's gonna be 100 percent fine this one marine's gonna pop he's gonna lift land and get behind there yeah absolute easy hold for soul key and unfortunately shao shai is just not gonna be able to do anything he's kind of boned honestly when it comes to the early game it's uh, not a great spot. It's definitely not a great spot. He will be able to get his lair going and you know, could do something with Amita's a little bit later on, but this is perfect for Sulky. He's managed to force a ton of lings out. He's slowed down the economy without doing a single thing. He's just sitting back at home behind his wall. He's already done the damage. Like this is what you're looking to do against a zerg player this is what bishop was trying to do against xiao shui last game right he moved out with six marines put his army at risk to try to force out lings and it didn't xiao shui just didn't bite it didn't work now here we've got sulky just chilling behind the wall he sees the he scouts he sees the lings coming and because xiao shui went for this aggressive opener doesn't do anything we're already in a great spot sulky just gonna throw down a second barracks he's gone for an academy and this is a great follow-up as well whenever you feel like the zerg player is behind two racks academy is insanely good it's so good the reason being that your opponent they're already kind of suffering they're having a hard time if you can force them to make a couple of sunken colonies it's just devastating it's so much damage uh, and you don't even have to actually attack either you don't have to do you don't have to you know try to bust the sunkens or anything you can just walk across the map 
not even across the map, walk out to the middle, and the Zerg has to build the sunken colony so they die, and then you just scan, see they made them, turn around, go back home, and you've just nuked their opportunity to deal any damage with uh, Mutas, because that's what he's looking for. That's how he's looking to get back into this game. It's like, man, I really need to get damage with Mutas, that's for sure. I don't know what happened here. Maybe the Lings tried to come in and deal some damage, but hey, medics pop out and I think save all of these Marines, which that is, again, not a good sign. <laughs> We're in so much trouble. Oh, boy. Xiao Shui is in so much trouble. He builds a sunken colony preemptively. But he'll need a second one if he wants to live. Looks like he's just going to gamble. That maybe he can put out enough mutas. And delay long enough with these lings that he might be able to survive. And it looks like he will. First sunken is going to be started. These marines will head back home. So he wasn't at, at least, at the very bare minimum. Chao Shui was not forced to build two sunken colonies. That is a win. That is indeed a win. Now the Mitas are out. They're just going to start to patrol. Try to figure out where this Bioforce is. It's over on top of his own pizza slice. So quite a defensive position for these initial Marines to be sitting in. But it's completely fine. Look at how few Mutas have been made. Look at how few Mutas we have on the field as Shao Shui. It is paltry. Five Mutas. At 6 minute 40. We're scraping together the bare minimum to do anything with this meta play. And ah, he misses the first shot as well. Takes about half damage on one of these mutas. This is brutal. I really do feel for Shao Shui. He's going to come in, look for a little damage. This is so necessary. He absolutely needs to get something done with these. Muta almost being thrown into its death there. He's got 11 now. And the Marines are about to run out of their stim. It's a good time to poke once again. Want to wait until the Marine stim is completely done before coming in. But he's kind of cutting it a little bit close there. Sending him in just before it finishes. More Marines are going to come up and join the pack. Xiao Shui doing a good job so far. Picking off a lot of these marines, honestly. Does back off finally. Picks up that wounded mutilisk. Gonna cycle it back into the pack. Maybe a little bit early for that, but... He really does need that... Fighting power. He needs that firepower... To try and gun down these marines for a little bit longer. He doesn't have a transition on the way. He doesn't really have anything going right now. Aside from this third... One SCV going to make its way over towards that third. Few Mutalisk reinforcements over at this rally point. Diving in now. Going to go onto these Marines, but immediately heading back out on the map. Oh, good God. We really, we can't have that happen again. Or Shao Shui is just going to lose. Cannot be just running in like that. Army going to move over towards this natural. Xiao Shui responding. Bringing his mutalist back. This is quite a bit of mutas. But that is a significant marine threat. Two of these mutas are very close to death. Luckily, they're not going to die right away. But they do end up going down. As the mutas attempt to fly by. Bringing all the mutas together now. Looking to shut down this force once and for all, but it's already been a little bit too long, I feel. The Marines are in a decent spot to be reinforced. And I don't think that Xiao Shui can dive on this and kill it all off before the reinforcement wave comes. Does get some pretty good volleys here. All right, we're getting close. Not too many mutas left over, but there's enough to one-shot still, and maybe he will be able to pick this off. There's the reinforcement wave, but most of the medics are dead, and only two remain with 
Zero energy between the two of them. They're gonna dive in. Start to pick off some more of these Marines. It's cleanup time now. And Xiao Shuai will finish off that bio force. Back at home, he has the hive uh, already finished. He has def uh, some lurkers on the way. Defiler's mound has just been thrown down. He can start to drone once again a little bit. Get into this Hydra Defiler play. Uh, right as the Valkyries are coming out. So that's fantastic. The Valkyries were made and they're really not going to be able to do much to Shao Shuai. Shao Shuai going to be able to move some Lurkers on the field as well and look to Lurker Landmine his opponent to death. If he gets a good Lurker Landmine out on the map before... Oh gosh, he's going to see it. That's too bad. That really is a shame. I think that there's a good chance that uh, Soul Key would have walked right into that if the Lurkers had burrowed a tiny bit faster. But he just didn't have the control there. Both players were looking away for a moment. And now it's not going to be possible. Soul Key is going to be on the lookout for things like this. Some dropships are making their way out on the field. Some Scourge are coming as well, but... There's a big opportunity for Soul Key to maybe bomb the main. At the same time, though, this all could come forward. Right now is when Soul Key is at his most vulnerable. Right as he picked up all of those Marines, he put himself in a very difficult position. Oh, wow. Okay, all of those go down. There's a Ling over here. Soul Key, he's been spotted. Is there a good response from Shao Shao? He's got six. Muta's left. He's going to bring all of his lings down here. Try to catch this over the chasm, over the lake as he's coming in. Get some free shots onto that. Pretty good stuff. Might just barely be able to kill that. No, the dropship survives. But Xiao Shuai will be okay for now. Hanging back with these lurkers, just holding this high ground. Kind of an interesting location to camp for now. We still don't have any vessels out, and the first two are about to pop. Let's see if uh, Xiao Shui can get a Defiler across the map. If he gets this Defiler over, it could be lights out for, for Soul Key. This is getting scary. Defiler going to consume and move in. The Marines are moving out on the map at the same time. I think that, uh, <laughs> I think that Soul Key's made a pretty serious error in his decision making at this point the lurkers are gonna die in the middle of the map but these lurkers are still present and accounted for this is gonna be so much damage dark storm in the natural is so painful it is so painful immediately he realizes his mistake he's gonna head back home gonna bring all of these marines and science vessels to bear oh my god Gosh, the Lurker Landmine over here is insane as well. Going to deal so much damage. That was beautifully done by Xiao Shuai. These Lurkers probably should back up a little bit. He needs another Defiler as well. Really important he gets one into position to deal with this. Uh, Vessel's going to go down for free. Lurkers at the top of the ramp now. Absolutely annihilating everything. Sulky getting a taste of his own medicine this game. This is what he does to so many Terran players on the ladder, and now it's being done to him. Nothing to consume right now. Will these Marines be able to break through the Lurkers right in this position? He needs the Dark Swarm. Where is it? Okay, he's actually going to clear everything anyway. <laughs> he gets basically all of these Marines. There's only two left. Uh, and so the uh, Radiant will run out, or not the Radiant, excuse me, the... Uh, Scan is going to run out. Vessels are going to run forward. <laughs> Not vessels. Fire bats are going to run forward. Vessels really can't do anything at this point. More mutas are going to be coming in. Lurkers breaking the position as well. Xiao Shui has done it. He is on top of the production. And GG is called Soul Key Taps Out. Again, getting a taste of his own medicine this game. Just making a tinier. This is so typical of newer Terran players is not 
being aware of the ability like the the pathways to the base he's sitting over here he's got the vessels you have to come out and challenge this area you have to be scanning to figure out what's coming your way because if a defiler just walks this direction and you headed out in some random uh direction across the map and you don't spot that defiler coming it just ends your game it's so quick it's so painful Solky loses this game because he didn't pay attention to that angle if he had come over here for example while the defiler was coming up this direction and put a dark or a, an irradiate on that it wouldn't have made it into the natural or at least it would have been you know put one dark swarm not three or four dark swarms down into the main base and he may have been able to hold on anyways guys that's it that's all i've got for you today i hope you enjoyed this little series with shao shui soul key bishop and stork it's been fun and i'll see you in the next one